Greetings there, everybody. Party J here once again, ready to start a new project here. After finishing Dragon Quest just recently, I figured that I probably should tackle the other big RPG that was on the NES. Hope you can join me as we go through the fantastic world of the original Final Fantasy. The world is veiled in darkness. The wind stops, the sea is wild, and the earth begins to rot. The people wait for their only hope, a prophecy. Where the world is in darkness, four warriors will come. After a long journey, four young warriors arrive, each holding an orb or crystal. Let's get into it! It is the original Final Fantasy. That's going to be the new project. But there's going to be, it is, this version is a little, let's say, tweaked. It is not the original one on the NES. It's slightly tweaked to fix a lot of things. Uh, the original, some original graphics from the Famicom version have been returned in this one. Also, some of the battle sprites for the monsters have been reverted back to the Japanese Famicom version. Also, tons of bugs have been fixed. And, but other than that, it plays almost like the original. It looks like the original, and that's why I want to play it. But I don't want to play the original due to the bugs and all that. So, I found a hack that fixes most, if not all, the bugs in it, and I'm gladly go with that one. And I would wholeheartedly say play this one with this fix because if not you can play the many ports of this game including the GBA Donna Souls version the PSP version the how the mobile version or the newly released pixel remastered version which I have to say is fantastic actually but if you want to play original, definitely look for a patch that fix most, if not all, the bugs to this game. And that's great. So this fix will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. So that's the thing. So until then, let us start a new game. Uh, the major thing I want to point out on this screen is the response rate. You can actually change it. The lower the number, it doesn't go with the dialogue during, like, towns. It's only battle speed, basically. If you want text that goes fast in battle, do it higher number. You can go as high as 8. You want it to read what it says relatively thing and go kind of slow, choose a lower number. If you want to go it really slow, choose one. But I'm going to do it at seven because that's what I usually go. Eight is normal, but it goes like way too fast. I want to kind of see what goes on. Seven is a good number. Let's go. So in the original Final Fantasy has six classes you can choose from. You got Fighter, Thief, Black Belt, Red Mage, White Mage, and Black Mage. Fighter, all around, rounded character, a lot of physical power, can equip most, if not everything in the game, except for like Mage type weapons. And 
is going to be probably the good foundation of your team and the one that's going to probably take the most hits. So you want him either first or second slot. Good to go. Thief, good agility in the original. The, I think he was meant to be good for if you wanted to run away a lot, uh, but it was bugged. So he essentially became a lesser warrior, basically. So that's kind of what the w way it goes. I usually don't go with a thief, but hey, that's what it is. Black Belt, your monk class, good with his bare fists. You don't want to equip him with pretty much anything throughout the game other than just his fists and maybe body armor. Because he is going to be really, really powerful later on. And, you know, high strength. I think a little bit high agility. But uh, magic, eh, there it is. Red Mage, a kind of jack of all trades, master of none. So he dabbles in white and black magic. And in the later levels of spells doesn't really work too well. Early on, pretty good. Later on, no good. You can equip a decent amount of um, weapons and armor, but overall, I don't know. I maybe would run one of them, but I'm not 100% sure. So white mage, white magic, very squishy. Uh, can equip too many things. Uh, equip hammers for some reason. I have no idea why a white mage can equip hammers, but hey, there's probably some hidden lore in there somewhere. But uh, definitely very squishy. You want to keep them definitely in the third or fourth slot if you're going to run it. And black mage, also very squishy. Can't really equip too many weapons except for rods and daggers and obviously has the full range of black magic in the game so that's pretty much it so what i usually go with and what i'm going to go with is two fighters a white mage and a black mage that's what i that's my main group that I go with through most of the time that I played this game and in its many, many ports. So, our first fighter, you give him names, I'm going to call him Yaim. And you can only have four letters, so I'm, I call him Yaim. Uh, short for Yames, which I'm going to do with it. I don't really know the story behind this. I think someone spelled my name wrong and put a Y instead of a J. So, and that just kind of stuck. So I'm like, hey, cool. Let's go with that. So, yeah. And uh, we're going to go with another fighter. I only go with two fighters because there's just so much equipment in the game. And you either sell it or you equip it. That's the thing. So I'm going with two fighters. The second fighter is going to be called Idru. I don't know, just kind of a name that I think someone said to me once and it kind of sounded cool. I'm like, yeah, that's that's cool. I'll let go with that. So we got Idru. Game's Idru. The next one is the White Mage. White Mage is going to be called... Unfortunately, I can't put I-A for Lydia. So I'm just going to be there. So the full name is Lydia. And in later ports that have more letters, I'll call her Lydia. So there we go. And last is going to be a black mage. Because I want full range of white and black magic in my party. So that's it. So I usually go with two names. I either go with the name... Zom, which is this, Zom, or I go with 
a the name uh Vox. Vox. So in this one, I'm gonna go with Zom, because that's the more common name I use. I don't know why I call him Zom, but hey, that's pretty much what it is. So there we go. That's gonna be my team. Two fighters, one white mage, one black mage. I wanna hit hard, but also have good range in magic. That's pretty much it. So it's a definitely a good party to start with if you're beginning this game. You get like a good range of attacks and the monsters hit the two guys on top more than they hit the guys on the bottom. Hey, that's what it is. Anyway, let's get into the game. Here we go. We are just out here in the field. Got a town, a castle, but first, let's go to our subscreen. And this is our menu screen. And we have a lot to go over, so let's let let's get going. Starting with the top left, the big box with the four circle the four circles in it is our orbs. That's the main part of the story. We gotta collect four orbs. That shows us what orbs we have, which ones we don't. Below that is our gold, how much gold we have currently. I have 400, that's what you start with. Simple as that. Below that, we have our items, magic, weapons, armor, and status. Let's go through them very quickly. We got items is your non-equipment items, such as heal potions, pure potions, tents, and etc. I'll explain that more once we actually get items. And secondly, we have magic. The only two people that have magic right now are our white mage and our black mage. And as you can see in their, their box, they have magic at the bottom. And let us go into it. This is our magic screen where all the spells that we have learned throughout the game are. And it's from level one to eight and displays of the current spell charges and the maximum spell charges. And that's pretty much it. So we have level one, two slash two. What does that mean? Okay, we have level one. The first two is the current spell charges that we have. That is the available spell charges that we have now. The one after the slash is our maximum spell charges. So if we used one spell charge, it'd be one, two. And that's pretty much it. That is what it is. And once we level up more and more, we will be available to get more spell charges in certain levels as we go throughout the game. All right, so that covers magic a little bit. Um, and we got weapons. So we have our equipment. This is where our weapons get. So if we buy weapons or find them in the dungeons, this is where we'll find them. We have equip. We have equip. So you can go in there and equip your items. We can trade, which goes from one character to another. And if you get too many items and you want to get rid of some of the old stuff and you don't have access to selling them, you can drop them. Very important later on in the game, let's just say. Armor, same deal. You can equip armor, trade it, drop it, so forth. I'll get into more of the equipment as we get equipment. And then we get into the status. This is going to be the big one. Okay, so we go into, let's go into games. So let's start in the top, top left. We have the name of the character, which is games. That's, that's my fighter. And then right beside it, we have the class, which he is a fighter. And then beside that, going to the right, is the current level of the character, which is, you just started the game, so it'd be level one. So below that, we have a nice big box saying experience points, and we have none right now. And right below that is for the next level, which is 40. So we need 40 experience to get to the next level. Pretty sound. Now, we're going to start with the left, bottom left, and then we're going to the bottom right. So bottom left right now is we got our strength, agility, intelligence, vitality, and luck. 
Let's go through these stats one by one. Strength affects your attack stat. So we go over to the damage. I literally draw a line. Strength affects your damage stat. Pretty much it. Higher your strength, the more damage you do. Simple as that. Your agility does affect your actual hit rate. Hit rate. Because your hit rate is your accuracy, and your agility does essentially affect your hit rate, but also your evasion. So, obviously, the higher evasion of higher agility you have, the better hit rate and evasion you have. Simple as that. Now, we have intelligence, which affects your magic accuracy of how well you use magic. Now, in the original game, like I keep on saying, that this is bugged completely. It does not affect it at all. It is... It is a mess, let's just say. In this one, not so much. It does affect it so pretty good. So, I'm interested to see, because I've only played a little bit of this, I'm interested to see late game, how, how it affects it, and see how potent spells get. Very good. But intelligence affects your magic accuracy. That's that's what this the sk skill does. Vitality affects your HP upon level up. So the higher the vitality is, the more HP you get when you level up. This is only affects ma maximum HP. So there you go. Simple as that. Simple stat. Uh, luck does increase the chances to run. That's that's the thing. In the original one, and that's what I basically would say, uh, this didn't work too well. The thing is that Thief has very good luck, but apparently it doesn't really work too well in the original. In this version that I am playing right now, it does. So higher the luck, the better chance you can run. All right, so we're going to head to the right part of the screen where we got damage, hit, absorb, evade, and magic defense. First of all, I want to say if this looks a little different from the game you're playing probably now, that would probably be the original version, and the original version does not have magic defense. That is apparently blocked or a hidden stat in the original for some reason, I have no idea why. But anyway, let's go through damage. Damage obviously affects of how much damage you do. The higher it is, the more damage you do. Simple. Hit ratio is your accuracy. So higher it is, the better you can hit. Now, another thing with hit is that there's groups of 32. When you get 32 points, you get another hit multiplier. So, you will be able to hit twice. So, it would be, for example, if we got 32 and we have currently 10 damage, we'll hit that 10 damage twice. Type of thing. And every 32 points will let you add another multiplier to your attack. That's what it is. Now, Absorb, you can literally replace that with Defense. So that's pretty much what it is. The higher it is, the better you can actually take physical damage. So fighters are going to be pretty good because they're going to be wearing heavy armor. They are going to be able to take a lot of hits. So evade stats is how well you evade physical attacks. Simple as that. Obviously, when you put on heavy armor, this will go down. If you wear light armor, it obviously will stay same or even go up. So it's evading attacks completely. And then our hidden stat, magic defense, is basically to not protect you against magic, but to evade magic attacks. So the higher it is, the more you will evade magic attacks. There we go. And that is 
sums up pretty much the screen. So let us go out and continue on with the game. That's pretty much it. Holy cow. Anyway, let us go into the castle because we're going to the town first. Uh, we're going to the town afterwards. We go into the castle, which you don't really need to, but if you kind of want to know what's going on in the overall story, it's best to kill the castle first. So let's, uh, let's go around and talk. The king is looking for the light warriors. You do not happen to be them, do you? Well, maybe. We do have these orbs. Hello? Oh, my sister. It is one of the princesses. Again, I don't know if she has a name, but it is definitely one of the princesses. All right, let's uh, let's go up here. Hello, let's start. The, uh, okay, that's the guy says exactly the same as the other one. Let's uh, let's talk to this one. In sadness, the queen has locked herself inside. Really? And why can't I open the door? Hello. I am Jane, Queen of Corneria. Please save my daughter, Princess Sarah. Okay. I guess we have to go and rescue a princess. Princess Sarah. Hello. Please save the princess. The princess was looking for me. Which one? Obviously not the captured one, but hey. And originally, originally, this guy here was invisible for some reason. I have no idea why he was invisible, but he was invisible in the original. Garland used to be a good knight until... Until what? What what happened? It's a lot of mystery. So yeah, uh, the princess, one of them is in there. And then we have Princess Sarah, who was captured by Garland. Going up here. We don't need to come here right away, but we might as well go check it out. 400 years ago, the treasury was locked by the mystic key. For our ancestors, give the key to the Prince of Elfland for safekeeping. Okay. Out if you needed to get in there. If you needed to get in there, you would have to go all the way to Elfland, get the key from the prince, who... It seems a little aggravated, so anyway... And you say the same thing. So we can't go in here because it's locked. This door is locked by the mystic key. And same with this one. Yes, it is locked by the mystic key. Alrighty. Got a couple locked doors already. Progress is blocked. Alright, let's make our way upstairs to the king. Preferably, because, you know, he's not down here. So let us go up, up the stairs. And let us go down first, so. There is nothing. Oh, there's a guy over here. Let's say, what's, what's this? Reports say that Garland holds the princess in the temple to the northwest. Good information. Temple, northwest. Got it. And nobody is over here. So if you playing in the ports, and I'm not going to talk too much about the ports, but in, I think, mainly all of them, if you go into the town first and then try to leave, a guard will say, hey, the king wants to see you and you will be brought here. That's why Brian came here, because, you know, essentially, you need to come here to kind of be like, oh, where do I need to go? Okay, well, that guy says, like, all the other ones. Hello there, kingly sir. Light warriors. Just as Lacan prophesied. Or prophecy. 
Garland has kidnapped the princess. Please help her. Okay, you want to tell me anything else? Or is that it? So that's why you need to go talking to other people like that guy down in the lower lower left told us that Garland was spotted in a temple to the northwest. And that's pretty much where we go. So we have a destination. The princess is in the temple with Garland. Why did he do it? I have no idea. Why? Why this happened? Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, let's go into the town. You can go into any of these towns. They're the same. It just kind of indicates that there's a town here. And here we are in town. Hello. Hello. Nope. 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 No, I want to talk to her. This is Corneria, the dream city. City of dreams, maybe? Oh, cool. So here we have the inn. We're going to deal with that later on. And we're going to go talk to Legs up here. Look at this girl with legs. Holy cow. Hey. What's up? I am Arion. The... Ari... Uh, Arion? The dancer. You are like one of a handful of NPCs that actually have names in this game. Does she have any... Does she do anything? No, just she's the dancer. Warriors, revive the power of the orbs! I certainly try to, but anyway. We can go to the fountain and actually talk to it. See your face upon the clean water. How dirty. Come wash your face. I wash thy face. I prefer thy face. But anyway, let's uh, go to the well. This is a well. You think it might be there for something to it, but in fact, it's just an ordinary well. Now, I don't know for sure, but it might be a slight jab at maybe something lore-related or, hell, even Dragon Quests, maybe? Because, you know, in some Dragon Quests, there are things in wells, like and there might be a slight jab at that. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, let's go into the weapon shop because we need to go get some things to help us on our journey. So, let's go with bite. And we got our wooden staff, small dagger, wooden nunchucks, a rapier, and an iron hammer. So let's take the iron hammer and give it to our white mage. Again, I don't know why a white mage can equip an iron hammer. What they can. And... Go with it. And here we go. We're gonna get two rapiers for our fighters. So another one. And... Lastly, a small dagger for our black mage. Alright, so let's get into here. We have our weapons, so all of them are in the correct person. Let's see our stats beforehand. So let's go to the games. He has a damage of 10, a hit ratio of 10. So 10 and 10. Let's equip that weapon. And let's look at it. So his damage went up to 19. And his hit ratio went up to 15. So we are our more efficient fighters now. Sweet. Okay, so let's equip this and equip everyone. Because make sure you go equip your weapons after you get them. Because if you don't, they're pretty much useless. So we're going to go to check out stats. So our white mage went from went up to 11, hit ratio 5. And our black mage went up uh, to a damage of 6 and a hit ratio of 15. Wait a minute, our black mage can hit better than... Oh, I guess hammer... The hammer misses? I guess, yeah. It's more efficient. We could equip our white mage with a wooden staff, and that'd probably be a better hit ratio, but we have two fighters. I think we're going to be good. 
So let's get into the armor shop because I want to be less squishy. That's always good. So we go here, we got cloth, wooden armor, and chain mail, or chain armor. Uh, let's get our chain for our fighter, both our fighters. And let's get cloth for our, both of our mages, because that's what they actually can only wear. Uh, the wood armor is good for a thief, and I believe a monk also, or a black belt. And if you were getting a red mage, the red mage uh, can equip the chain also. So, there we go. So let's go into here, check out the uh, the absorb and the evade state state stat. So we have absorb of zero and an evade of fifty three. Let us equip that chain and see that we got an absorb of fifteen now. So we have a defense of fifteen. But our evade went down to 38, so we can not evade as well, but we can take damage a bit better. And that's what a fighter usually is good for. So let's... Nope. Uh, yeah, let's go here. So our white mage... Uh, basically 0 to 53, and our other one... Our black mage is 0 and 58. So let us see what the cloth does. So we have a absorb of 1, which is defense of 1, and our evade went down from 53 to 51. So the cloth doesn't really cut the evade as much as, you know, actual armor makes sense. And here, same thing. The absorb was one, and the evade went from 58, 56. So, again, can evade a lot better than taking damage. So there you go. So we have a hundred and excuse me, miss, 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 miss. But what? What do you say? Nope. What do you say? Please save the princess. I will get on that after I explain magic. I need to explain magic. So let's go into the magic. So this is a white magic place. Uh, you learn magic by buying spells. So that's what you do. Uh, you have, this is a, uh, this is Cornira. Cornira has level one magic. So we're in the white magic. The only person going to learn white magic right now is our white mage. So let's go to Lydia. So we have four spells per level, but we can only learn three of these four spells. So it's kind of like, oh, which one do you want here? So we have Cure, which is your basic Cure spell. It can restore anywhere from 16 to 32 HP, and it's only for one ally. That's pretty much it. So, and it takes one spell charge. It, every spell takes one spell charge. And then we have Harm, which... Uh, hits every enemy on the screen, but it only inflicts damages on undead enemies. And that damage is anywhere from 20 to around 80 damage. Around there. Give or take, around there. Eyeball it. And that's only for undead enemies. So if you are if you have a mixture of undead enemies and, like, living enemies, the living enemies will not get affected by harm. So just keep it out there. Uh, fog is your protect spell, and that will raise your defense by eight. So that is one ally. You can do any of them. You raise your defense by eight. Pretty good early on. Later on, not so much, but early on, pretty good. And then finally, Rise, or Ruse, I think it's Ruse. Ruse? Probably Ruse. Is a self spell, so if you cast it, it will be on the caster, and will raise your evade by 80. So, 80 points. So, again, you will... <laughs> 
our white mage, which is Lydia, will does ru uh, ruse. She will be literally cannot be hit by physical attacks, or very like unlikely to get hit by physical attacks. So, I believe also Ruse was bugged in the original. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I believe Fog was slightly bugged, but I'm not I, I'm not 100% sure on that. But I think Ro, uh, Ro, Ru, Ru, Ruse was, was definitely bugged in the original. This one, not so much. It definitely works. Okay, so... Uh, each spell is 100, so I have 185, so I can only get one. And I'm going to get Cure. And the spells I'm going to get are Cure, Harm, and Fog. I don't care about the Evasion too much, but I want to definitely early on would be good defense. So I guess in the long run, a Rose or... Rose would be... Ruse would be better, but eh, that's the one I'm going to get. So, eventually I'm going to be getting those. So, I don't have enough to get another spell, but I do want to explain Black Magic. The only person that can get black magic right now is our black mage with her zom. So let's go with it. So we got fire, sleep, lock, and lit. So let's go through these. Fire does minor, finer damage to one enemy. Not exactly sure how much it does, but it does life, very light fire damage to one enemy. Sleep goes a go puts this puts all enemies to sleep or has a chance of putting all enemies to sleep now in the original if you put an enemy to sleep they automatically wake the next turn i don't know 100 percent about this version that i'm playing right now i guess we'll find out because that's one of the spells i'm gonna be getting lock is decreases one enemy's evasion rate. I'm not too sure how by how much, but it does lower an enemy's invasion rate, so you can hit it. So if there's a thing that is hard to hit, pass this, most likely you'll be able to hit it. And then finally, we have Lit, which is basically your lightning attack. It's minor lightning damage. And that could be very good on water enemies. So, there we are. And that's your basic level 1 spells. So, the ones I'm going to probably get are Fire, Sleep, and Lit. Lock just doesn't really... really interest me. And I believe it is also, again, bugged in the original, so that's why I never got it. So, maybe I'll get it. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see. Let us uh, talk to you, sir. Lacan left this town and joined his colleagues at Crescent Lake. Oh, really? Who is this Lacan guy? Lucan? Lucan. The king is sure that someday the light warriors will come to save the princess, just as in Lacan's prophecy. Okay, well, if we are them... We have a destiny to rescue the princess and not take seven parts to do. Please save the princess. Now, I was mistaken. I said that there is obviously the Famicom graphics. Some of them were restored in this. I was mistaken. There was act It's actually not because originally our clinic here was a church. And this is where you revive your characters that have fallen in battle. So, this is still a clinic. So, the Famicom sprites haven't been there. So, it's just, it's just a plain old bug fix patch. Cool. Okay. You, sir. My home is in Porvoka. 
a beautiful port city far east from here. Okay. We'll be going there later on, so just hold on there. We're going to be hitting the item shop, which I really, really, really want to point out that this... I want to say it's a hack, but it's essentially fix a fix thing. A fix patch. Uh, allows you to buy 10 items. And a lot of people are like, okay, well, that's in the original. No, it was not. The thing is that you go into your buy item, you choose an item like your heal, which I do want to get a heal, so buy this. Yes. And then boom. We go here. You can hold up to 99 heal, pure, and tense from here. Imagine you wanted to buy like 60 or 50 or even hell, 30 heal potions. You would have to go into buy, choose your item, confirm it, and then go into back here and then do it all over again. 30 times. Goes on the patience. Draws on the patience a little bit. So I'm really glad they included the buy 10 items in this uh, this fix that I did, that I installed. Beautiful. Okay, anyway, the items. We got heal potions that restores light. It's basically a cure spell. So, essentially a cure spell. And then Pure restore, uh, cures you from poison. And then a Tent is actually the cheapest way to save the game on the map screen. And it restores a little bit of HP also. So, hey, it's all good. And I think that comes to the conclusion of exploring Perneria. And if you want to save your game, you go into your inn. And yes, welcome to stay and you save your data. I believe it's 10, 30. Oh, good, I can't. Anyway, you go in there, you sleep, and restores both your MP and HP to full. And, or I guess spell charges, because it's not MP in this. And that's, that's pretty much it. So we have a goal of going to rescue the princess in the northeast, or west, west, northwest temple where Garland is. And that's where we're going to be going in the next one. So thank you for joining me on this first episode. I know it was really long. I know it was a lot of info stuff. But as we go along, it's going to be more journey and less information. Until I need to say this information. So there we go. Anyway, see everybody in the next one. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.